I work in IT, I work in an MSP, I see job postings, I talk to managers, and I've been through multiple rounds of internal promotions myself. I'm going to say this straight, 90% of IT job postings are lying to you. They're inflated, disconnected from reality, and written by someone who's never troubleshot a single IT issue themselves. And way too many look at these postings, get discouraged, and think, man, I'm not qualified for this. Meanwhile, the hiring manager is literally praying that somebody half competent applies. So today I'm going to walk you through what these job postings really mean from the inside of the industry. Not Reddit, not some career coach who's never touched a switch, not some HR person who doesn't know what IT stands for. So the secret that nobody tells you is that hiring managers are not writing these positions. HR is writing them or some recruiter or somebody who just googled IT job posting template. Now the result is that job descriptions look like this. Entry level three to five years required. Must know VMware, Hyper-V, AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes, CCNP required for 45,000 a year. Looking for experience with Terraform, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, SCCM. Half of these tools listed aren't actually even used in the environment, and nobody in their entire IT department knows all of this either. These job postings are filled with outdated requirements, list items, buzzwords, random tools that were copied from somewhere else. And that's why when you look at these job postings, they don't actually really match reality. HR is just trying to cover themselves, not hire accurately. So you need to understand, they do this because that HR thinks that this protects the company. In their mind, more requirements are better filtering. More buzzwords mean you're going to get a better hire. Higher bars reduce bad applicants. In reality, what this does is it just scares people away and incentivizes people to lie. I've seen help desk one roles that list CCNP or junior sysadmins that need 10 years of VMware experience, or even worse, $50,000 jobs that require bachelor's degree, multiple certs, years, internships. If you're looking at this and thinking it's delusional, you're right, but you need to understand none of it is actually required. Managers will hire people who don't meet half of the experience if they actually show up and interview with some competence. The posting is a fan fantasy, but the actual job is normal. So if the job postings are fake, what are managers actually looking for? The following is the real list, and I, this is what I put together just from being in the industry and seeing what makes people succeed. Firstly is can you troubleshoot calmly? Can you break down a complex issue into digestible steps and just take them one thing at a time? If you can do this without spiraling, you are instantly valuable. Of course, do you understand the fundamentals? Now, I'm not talking cloud architecture, Kubernetes, any insane virtual networking or anything like that. I'm talking DHCP, DNS, basic networking, MFA, Active Directory, group policy, Intune basics. These matter way more. Can you communicate? At an MSP or in IT in general, communication means everything. Nobody wants an engineer who knows everything but can't communicate a single thing to the client. Do you show initiative? Certs, projects, labs, they do matter. Are you somebody that people want to work with? Hiring managers are going to pick people who have a positive attitude more of the time. Some of the best people I worked with were not the most technical people. They just kept cool under pressure and could explain their thinking clearly. Think, am I the type of person who other people would want to work with? Now let's talk about one of the most unfair things you see in the IT market. Entry level roles that require experience. That to me is oxymoronic. Again, people see these listings, they see that they need experience with Active Directory or with Microsoft or with Intune, and they think that they're instantly disqualified. What's actually happening is that companies don't want to train. Training takes time and training takes money. It also takes real engineers off real work because they have to hold your hand. So if they put one to three years of experience with Active Directory, they think that they take this away. But managers will hire people with zero experience if you show initiative, curiosity, the ability to think, the ability to make judgment calls, and especially if you've done a little bit of labbing with the technologies that we just talked about. So the bar isn't super high, it's just advertising really poorly. If you've done a basic Active Directory lab, you have one year of Active Directory experience. Now salary ranges are kind of full of lies too. There are three types of salary listings. There's the fake high range where it says 85 to 100k and then they actually only pay 65k. This is super common. There's the depends on experience listing which really means that we will offer you the absolute low end unless you negotiate aggressively. And then there's the we literally don't know the market range which small companies will do all the time where they don't know if they should pay a system administrator 55,000 or 95,000. The point is don't let the numbers scare you away either. Apply for everything and then negotiate based off of fair market rate in your area. Understanding that some areas are just going to pay higher than other areas. So how can I read a job posting effectively? Three plus years of experience really means we don't have time to train from zero. You can still apply. Bachelor's degree required means that HR wrote this. The hiring manager doesn't actually care. Experience with X, Y, Z means that we really don't understand the environment well enough to actually put this into a posting. So we're just going to put everything. Certifications required means that if you have one cert, we're thrilled. You should be getting certs. PowerShell required means that you need to have a couple of AD commands in the bag without actually breaking stuff. And then must
must be a strong communicator. This is the only one that's actually 100% real. You have to be good at communicating. Guys, the best way that you can practice communicating is set up a camera and talk to it. It's the most uncomfortable thing in the world at first, but the more you do it, the better you will get at relaying your ideas. So the raw truth about hiring in an MSP world is that it's fast, it's chaotic, it's super messy. Managers really hire based off of who can think, who can learn, who shows effort, who can communicate well, and who's a person that we would want to work with. So if your resume has a couple of certs, some labs, fundamentals, and confidence, you are absolutely a hireable person. Now I've seen people with no experience, but who displayed it well and communicate well, get promoted over people who had absolutely stacked resumes, but just don't communicate well or have a bad attitude problem. Again, just remember the post describes a unicorn, the company hires a human. Now, one thing that people don't understand is once you get past applicant tracking systems, hiring managers are really desperate. Like they need bodies on the front lines. They're understaffed, they're behind on tickets, they're covering outages, they got people taking PTO, they got people churning all of the time, leaving. They don't want the perfect candidate. They just need someone reliable, somebody who's gonna show up, somebody who shows initiative, and somebody who communicates well. Understand as well, most applicants don't prepare. Most applicants freeze under pressure. Most applicants can't actually explain fundamentals. I mean, think about it. We all maybe know what DNS is because we learned about it in the Network Plus and then a little bit in the Security Plus, but can you actually explain what DNS is? Like, do you know the difference between public and private DNS? Do you know where a computer stores these mappings of IP addresses to FQDNs? Do you know all of these important things about records with public DNS and things like that? There's probably a lot more to it than you think. At least I know that that was the case for me. So if you can explain these things, you are already top tier. Now the mindset shift you need going forward. First is apply to jobs where you meet 50 to 60% of the requirements. Of course, you can't go from zero to CCNP senior network architect without ever having touched a switch. Second is focus your resume on real tasks and not just buzzwords. Try and make things quantifiable and use your labs to your advantage. So instead of basic knowledge of Azure, we're going to put configured conditional access policies, MFA, user provisioning, named locations, basic Intune, instead of networking experience, configured VLANs, DHCP scopes, track devices using CDP, isolated ACL issues. Now rule three is that you have to use certs to validate your trajectory. If you say I'm competent in X, you should have a cert in X. I know people always hate on cert stacking, like you shouldn't go out and get certs because on job experience is more important. Yes, this is absolutely true. But if you say I'm good at networking, I understand network infrastructure. I can do X, Y, Z in a switch, a router, a firewall. And then you have a CCNA to back that up. That makes the claims that you can do all of those things much more credible. Rule four is that you have to bring real life stories to a job interview. This can be the hard part when you're going into an entry level job. So you have to mimic a real world experience in a lab. So for example, what you would do if somebody's account consistently got locked out, what kind of event codes would you look into? What do you do with a frustrated client and customer? And this is where I was saying, set up a camera and talk to the camera. It's uncomfortable, but it's going to help you so much at speaking. Okay, so the core message of this video is that job postings are not your barrier. Your perception of job postings is your barrier. Most IT job postings are inflated, outdated, unrealistic, or straight up copy paste ChatGPT stuff. The hiring manager themselves is going to care much more about fundamentals, troubleshooting, communication, curiosity, and attitude. And if you have those, you will be successful in today's job market. So stop self-rejecting. Stop assuming that the posting is literal. Stop thinking that everybody else who applies is over qualified. I promise you they're not and go out there and get after it. If this video helped you drop a comment, letting me know the craziest requirement you've ever seen on an IT job posting. If you want a video on how to write an IT resume, how to interview correctly, or how to break into IT fast, say the word and I will make it. Appreciate you guys for all the support lately. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions and good luck deciphering the crazy outlandish IT postings from the real ones and go apply.